Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my Chaos Dwarf guide. So Chaos Dwarves are one of my favourite teams in Blood Bowl. Um, they're very similar to Necromantic in, in, in a few ways, in that they're never bad. They do start off a little rough, and that's because the Bull Sentinels are 130k each, the rerolls are 70k each. So so they're like they're like Necromantic in that because their team cost is quite high. They struggle to fit everything that you want in the starting roster, but they do build up great because they get Claw Mighty Blow piling on, the fabled Claw Mighty Blow piling on, and uh, they're just they're just good. They're just a good good team, a good all round team. So let's have a look at what Cyanide says. Strengths: one of the best defensive teams. Yeah, I mean, I guess they are. They, I guess defensively they are quite strong. They do have the Bull Centaurs, which you know can once they get break tackle. They're, they're formidable sweepers, kind of kind of movement nine in a way. Um, Bull Sentinels are difficult to stop. They certainly are. Um, resilient. Yeah, they're quite resilient. They're not as resilient as dwarves, though. That's the thing. They are more fun and interactive than dwarves because your opponent can always hunt down hobgoblins and get star player points and uh, get attrition that way. So they're, they're certainly not as resilient as dwarves. Weakness is one of the worst ball handling teams. Yeah, I mean... Obviously, from the start, because at the start you, you're likely to have two rerolls and only agility three, but you want to handle with agility two, so they're they're pretty bad early on. But I mean that's easily remedied once you have a sure hands hop goblin. You're just as good as humans at ball handling. Expensive team rerolls, yeah. I mean, obviously the same cost as a lot of other teams. A lot of teams have the seventy k rerolls, but it's certainly not what you'd like, is it? And predominantly slow players, mm, yes and no. I mean, six of them are slow, but you don't want them moving around much anyway. They're just there to punch people, mostly. They do have enough movement with the Bull Sentinels with Break Tackle. When they get Break Tackle, that they, they've got, they're actually pretty fast. Um, a bit like Necromantic. They are, they're pretty similar to Necromantic. So um, then you look at the three, the three big formats, matchmaking, TV-based matchmaking. You can min-max them. You can drop the bull centaurs and min-max them to death, which is disgusting. And uh, there's a famous guy in Fumble who um, who does that and has a ridiculous win rate. There's a few people actually that do that in Fumble. Just go, just drop the bull centaurs completely and 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 you know have claw mighty blow piling on on three or four players. And and you know it's a bit lame. I've done it in the past. I'm not going to lie. It is a bit lame, but um, you, you can do that, and it's obviously very very TV efficient then. Um, in tabletop, they're not so good. In tabletop, you'll see people going for a minotaur, for maybe a claw, a claw minotaur and stuff, to get a little bit of you know attrition going for them because they're a bit. They're good in tabletop, but they're a bit. I don't know. They're just a bit. They're a bit lacking, I think, somewhat in the in the NAF style tabletop events. And then you've got like short kind of leagues or even long leagues, whatever league play. They're I think they're up there with necromantic and dark elves in that they are durable and they're never bad. Wood Elves are obviously an amazing choice for leagues, as are Skaven, but they're much more likely to implode than Chaos Dwarves or Necro or Dark Elves. So yeah, there you go, that's that's the rough overview there. And um, we see Cyanide has got a new, nice new feature with the new teams. They've got these designs on them, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's just um, make a team. <laughs> With lots of cues. Um, okay, so let's go through the team. They've got a Minotaur now. This is unfortunately a Chaos Dwarf Minotaur and not a Chaos Minotaur. And what that means is he's only got strength on normals. He needs to roll a double for mutations, which is obviously clearly terrible. If, if he got mutations on normal, I'd be much more likely to start a team with him just because he could get up to claw and be useful for a while before he before he became not useful. But as it is, he's really only a very niche option for... Me. I mean, he does give you three dice mighty blow blitzers. You know, he's got horns, he's strength five, frenzy. You, you, you're getting six die bl blitzers with mighty blow. So he's he's got a niche in low TV, but um, I really don't like him. I really don't think Chaos Dwarves need him either. So overall... Especially using that mutation and building up. I mean, building up. It, it's it's not that bad. Like he, he's he's he, you'd rather have him on the pitch than Hobgoblin. The only thing is, it's he costs TV, doesn't he? He is like 150 TV for this. It is so easy to move with armor eight, and um, even despite him having strength five, I really don't like the mine at all. I don't like him on a Chaos team, and he's just strictly worse on a Chaos Dwarf team. So, yeah, not not my cup of tea. 
but glad we got him now for my favorite player and you can see it's an amazing new model um, I think they look really fantastic the hobgoblins he's only got a general he's 40k for 6337 so he totally outclasses a bretonian peasant he loses fen but gains a point of agility which is obviously clearly amazing they can become dedicated ball handlers easily if they take a plus movement or a plus strength or a plus agility they can become quite good ball handlers yeah, I mean this movement not so good to be honest I'd be inclined to forego the movement but um, definitely strength give them block show hands agility give them block show hands hope for the double to give blood show hands and you've got a great ball carrier then with, a, with just a hobgoblin um, other than that they're usually just going to be taking wrestle to defend themselves or dirty player to foul and really, I would just mostly take wrestle and dirty player on these guys. Um, mostly, I, I think actually mostly wrestle because I don't. I tend not to foul a lot, even though I love fouling. Um, so early on, they take wrestle. Later, I'd be more inclined to take a dirty player. And uh, yeah, hope hope for stats as early as possible, so that you can um, you can have a dedicated ball carrier hobgoblin. I think it's worth having a show hands hobgoblin somewhere on the team, even if he just takes block show hands. It's it's not so good to try to force one. But it's a good option to have a show hands but hobgoblin. And now the core of the team, the Chaos Dwarf Blockers. Um you know, four three two nine. They're exactly the same as a long beard, seventy K, block tackle, thick skull, general strength. The only thing is, compared to a long beard, well there's six of them, which is obviously a big disadvantage, but they can get mutations on doubles, which although, you know, they're not really getting a lot of value out of tentacles or anything, they get claw, which is which is all you need. So, and here's a bit of here's a bit of contention, right? They're better with guard as the first skill, but if you go guard first skill and then you roll a double, you get claw guard, and then basically you're wasting thirty k on claw because claw guard is a really bad player. You know, you want your guards to be supporting blocks, and you want claw mighty blow to be making blocks, and you want claw mighty blow piling on. If you go guard claw, it's that much longer to get mighty blow and that much longer to get piling on. So what I tend to do is I tend to go mighty blow first on nearly all of my Chaos Dwarves. Maybe four of them will go Mighty Blow first, and then the other two will go Guard first. But I think Guard is better. So in stuff like a NAF-style tabletop event, they would all go Guard. But in terms of development, you really want Claw Piling on Mighty Blow massively. And this is in Blood Bowl 2. In Blood Bowl 2016, Piling on is nerfed to death. So in that case, I'd probably go Guard first on them. So yeah, skills-wise, they just want Mighty Blow, Guard, Piling on, Claw. I'd even go Mighty Blow piling on a couple of them straight off the bat. Mighty Blow guard piling on Claw on doubles. You could go dodge. You could maybe go stand firm. I think Fen's okay for them. Once you have a Claw Pommer, Mighty Blow Claw piling on. Frenzy's a nice option to have, but you might want a Frenzy Bull, in which case you don't really want two Frenzies on this team. Strength 3 can get them into trouble. You could maybe take Dauntless Frenzy or Juggernaut. I mean, Jump Pup is obviously great, but only after you've got... Because they are Movement 4. This is the thing with Chaos Dwarves. This is what stops them being broken, really. If they if they were Movement 5, then the Claw Mighty Blow on them would be a lot better. Mighty Blow piling on. But Movement 4 does limit them somewhat. Stats-wise, obviously you take Strength. I don't think you take Movement, really, unless you've already got Claw Mighty Blow piling on. I had a player who got Claw Mighty Blow piling on frenzy movement five and that was absolutely fine um because he was like a bad troll slayer then obviously agility you don't bother with um i mean they're, they're great players they're like a long beard but with the added the added thing of claw and doubles which is obviously clearly completely amazing and fen's not a bad idea because you really don't want to go down men with chaos dwarves and you often will do because of the hobgoblins fragility right and here we have the this is obviously the the marquee player here Bull Centaur looks pretty amazing. Um, they have horns on the models, they don't have horns in the skills. They're 130,000, 6429, sprint, sure feet, thick skull. Now, they're 130k. So, when you look at this, and they've got general on normal and strengths on normal, they don't get mutation access because they're already, you know, mutated enough. That's the, that's the kind of rationale behind it. So, now. It's easy to look at this and think, oh, wow, they're movement nine. Well, they're not, because you really only sprint when you have to, you know? You're not going to be making... You shouldn't be making loads of GFIs with them. Go for it. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be trying to use the movement six all the time. But sometimes 
it's not that bad to go for it with them. <laughs> you know, you really shouldn't be pushing your luck with them at all. Fixed skull's a nice bonus, but you know, to show their dwarves, but it's not really that relevant. So almost what you're playing for, and obviously agility too at low TV isn't isn't very good. So at, at low TV, you basically got a Saurus for fifty thousand more, which isn't very good, is it? But Later on, of course, when they get developed, they become completely mo complete monsters. They're one of the few players that I take dirty, um, dirty player. No, I don't take dirty player. They're one of the few players that I take break tackle on. So I would like to go break tackle on one block on the other, usually, and then and then the other one. So they usually they're always going to take block, block and break tackle first. However, if I roll a double at any point, I'm taking dodge as soon as possible. So you're looking at block, break tackle, dodge. Hopefully, is the first three then guard and tackle. Maybe tackle first, and that sounds silly because you've got six tackle in your long beards. Well, Chaos Dwarf blockers. But these are fast, and Chaos Dwarves are slow. So the Chaos Dwarf blockers aren't really going to be using the tackle. You really want one of these guys as a safety, and he's really going to need tackle. So I will often go block, break, tackle, tackle, even before guard. You want guard just because guard's amazing. You can then go stand firm as well, so you've got a bludge, stand firm, strength four guys, really good. But the, the key thing is the break tackle, you know, that, that makes them, blodge break tackle but it makes them very, very mobile. And especially with this movement 6 slash 9, when you when you need it to be, it's movement 9, but you really can't rely on it. Which makes actually taking movement a decent option. The only thing is there's so many normal take, skills you want to take. Block, break tackle, tackle guard, that's 4. Dodge is 5. I would be happy with block, break, tackle, tackle, guard, dodge on, on both bulls, you know. But obviously, strength 5, you've got to take strength 5. If you get agility 3, then you could take agility 3 and give him sure hands. You could even give him sure hands without the agility 3. Because a strength 4 um, bludge carrier is something very hard to deal with. So you could definitely go like block, dodge, sure hands or something as your first 3 skills. With break, tackle, thrown in the mix at some point. It's definitely something you could do, sure hands on the bull, on the bull centaur. But I really prefer... To a carry with a bull centaurs um, when I can't skill them up, but try to develop a ball carrying hobgoblin. And also a key thing is, is to know when to use at low TV when to use your bull centaurs as expensive black orcs. And it happens sometimes. You know, it's it's really hard. It's kind of tough for chaos dwarves at low team value, especially against like orcs and um, chaos and Nurgle even sometimes. Because just being a bash team, being out strength, isn't very good. But if you throw these guys on the line and carry with a hobgoblin, then you suddenly got two bull centaurs. You've got two, you've got two black orcs and you've got six dwarves, and and that's a pretty bashy matchup, really. So um, here's I'll have a look at two teams I made earlier. Um, we've got the, this is the build that I almost always run, and um, basically you've got the apothecary there, because the worst thing you can have is losing a bull centaur early to like a kaz. You've got two at Kaza, permanent casualty, two team rerolls, six blockers. I think you have to have the six blockers and three hobgoblins. Now, if this was matchmaking, I probably wouldn't have the apothecary and I'd have the 12th hobgoblin because saving your apothecary for permanent injuries to one of these eight, while it's fantastic, you know, that, this is what I'd use in a league because I would want to use my apothecary only on a permanent injury on these eight. However, in a one-off match, you'd be better off using the Apothecary on like the first knockout or the first badly hurt or whatever. So I think if it, if it was for like matchmaking, I'd be tempted to drop the Apo and have a 12th player as a Hobgoblin. And then you'd have 20k towards the Apothecary after your first match. However, in a league, I would always want that Apothecary because just losing a bull is, is the worst thing imaginable. And losing a Chaos Dwarf blocker isn't, isn't very nice. But I, I pretty much always exclusively use this lineup when I'm starting a team. However, if two re, if two rerolls isn't your thing, you could, of course, drop a, drop a Chaos Dwarf blocker to get it. But what I prefer to do is I prefer to drop the Bull Sentinel. Because much like Necromantic teams, he is a bit overcosted without skills. He, is, he doesn't really get to use the Sprint and the Sure Feet that much. The Thick Skull isn't that relevant at low team value. The Agility 2 might as well be Agility 1, almost. So you're basically almost paying 130k for a Saurus, as I said. So, But then, if you only have one, then obviously it's e he gets skilled up faster because he's the one getting all doing all of the Bull Centaur stuff by himself. Once he gets blocked, he becomes a much better player. Break Tackle, then you can have the second one. Just save up for the second one. I think the Chaos Dwarves exerting their influence on the match is, you know, 
I would much rather have six book, six CDBs than five CDBs. Um, although I can't speak very good. Right. So yeah, I, I don't like this one, but you do get the three rerolls, which you know this is the thing. Three rerolls is fine because you've got or two rerolls is fine because you've got six blockers, but you do need those rerolls to pick up the ball and stuff. And I don't know. I can see why you would want three rerolls for a bit more reliability. And you know you could go two bulls and only five um, five cursed dwarf blockers. I can see that. It's just not something I do. Like this this one here. If you drop this apothecary here. You've got 50,000, haven't you? Drop this Chaos Dwarf blocker down to Hobgoblin, and then that gives you the third reroll. But um, I just I just think... I don't know, I just I prefer the more powerful route, definitely with Chaos Dwarfs. I definitely think they want all these. You want as few Hobgoblins on the pitch as possible, so I don't like starting with three rerolls anyway. I would I would pretty much always use this one, just for the get max power, minimal minimal hobgoblins, and try to get these bulls skilled up as fast as possible to become one of the best players in the game. So um there you go, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.